Um, as a background to the long-term outcomes, we've shown previously at 12 to 24 months that FOAMs are safe and highly effective treatment. We've looked at patient-reported outcomes, health-related <coughs> quality of life, both disease-specific and generic. We looked at eradication of reflux, venous refilling time, improvement in seat clinical classification, and also showed improved ulcer healing, accelerated ulcer healing and reduced recurrence. So back in April 2012, we got a pump priming grant from the Royal Society of Medicine Venus Forum, which allowed us to invite all these patients back for a five to eight year review um, with an, an overall aim of determining the long-term outcomes after foam. Our outcome measures altogether, I'm afraid there are quite a lot of outcomes that we've looked at. Um, so from a technical point of view, we looked at the duplex evidence of occlusion from the treated veins. From a clinical point of view, whether there were visible varicose veins or, and, and what the seat clinical classification was, we looked at the venous clinical sever severity score and we looked at ulcer healing and ulcer recurrence. From a hemodynamic point of view, we measured venous refilling time by digital photoplethysmography and patients filled in lots of questionnaires um, looking at their symptom improvement and their expectations and treatment and whether they were met, their general satisfaction with treatment and as I said, the, the general, uh, sorry, generic and disease-specific health-related quality of life. So our methods, we, we looked at 351 consecutive patients having 479 legs treatment, treated. And the important thing with our group is that no one was really excluded. There was nobody that we said, no, you can't have foam. And often they were given a, a, a choice of whether they wanted surgery or foam. And certainly in the short saphenous vein, nobody was, nobody was excluded. And as I say, there's consecutive all comers, and you'll see that the, um, it's quite different than the populations that are treated in the randomised control trials. They've got more severe disease. So all the patients had undergone ultrasound guided foam sclerotherapy for symptomatic or complicated varicose veins back in April 2004 to May 2007. As I say, they filled in these questionnaires looking at what symptoms they had, what they expected from their treatment and also the, the, generic, the quality of life questionnaires. They all underwent a venous duplex scan, had clinical examination and had photoplethysmography. We invited all the patients for follow-up um, to see them between April 2012 and February 2013 and basically repeated the same things. This is just a brief overview of how we did the treatment at the time. Everyone had a duplex um, mapping done prior to treatment and the marking was really so that we could apply the eccentric compression afterwards. Ultrasound guided cannulation, elevation of the leg prior to in injection, Tassari method with two, two milliliter syringes using 3% STD uh, on a one to four ratio with air and then injected the foam until we could see that there were um, the tributaries and trunks were filled with foam. It was, uh, the mean volume of foam we used was 10 mils in the Great Saphenous Vein. Post-treatment bandaging was applied, as you can see, eccentric compression using um, orthopaedic wool covered in a cohesive bandage and then a class two thigh length stocking worn over the top. The bandaging was left for around five days in most patients and then they wore the stock, the bandaging was then removed and they wore the stocking for two weeks. So we got an 80% attendance at follow-up with a median follow-up of 71 months. The median age was 57, 36 were male. Um, and as I say, 70, only 72% had uncomplicated varicose veins, C2 or C3. 22% had recurrent varicose veins, i.e. they'd had the same saphenous trunk treated previously. 87% underwent GSV treatment and 20% of the SSV. So 98 legs or 73 patients didn't come for follow-up, that's the 20%. Some, just under half of those didn't give a reason, they DNA'd. Um, but the ones that, and obviously you can see at the bottom that some died, we couldn't get those back. Some had moved away and three of them had been referred for surgery. Um, 22 patients, however, we managed to speak to and they declined coming to follow-up but said that they'd had no problems with their veins. So this is the first of the results side. We looked at expectations of the patients. We asked them prior to treatment what symptoms they had, so obviously not all patients had all symptoms. And then five to eight years later, sorry, we asked them what degree of improvement they were expecting in those symptoms. And then five to eight years later, asked them what degree of improvement they'd seen and correlated the two. And as you can see, um, between 79 and 94% of those had the expectations that they'd had previously either exceeded or met. 
We ask the same for social and leisure activities, including in appearance, the ability to wear different clothes, the ability to do their job better, and leisure activities, and also to see whether there'd be any improvement in their relationships, which quite a few did expect, and luckily that was exceeded or met in the majority. Didn't ask for details. Um, <laughs> From a patient satisfaction point of view, we asked two questions. So how satisfied on a scale of 1 to 10 are you with your foam treatment? And it's fairly clear that most of them were pretty satisfied. The second question was whether you'd recommend the treatment to your friends or family. And 91% basically said yes, they would. From a health-related quality of life point of view, on the first line is the Aberdeen score. And a higher score is actually a worse um, a worse quality of life from that point of view. And you can see the mean, so median score improved from 18.7 to 9.6, which was significant. The short form 12, which was the generic quality of life form that we used, actually has two outcomes, which is the um, mental component score, the MCS, which is sort of how a patient feels, and the physical component score, which is what a patient can do. The mental components, so for both of those, the median, the average of the general population is 50, and a higher score than that is a better score. So the mental component score didn't change significantly, but it was already 53.5 previously, so it couldn't get much better. And the physical component score did significantly improve, and that was sustained to five to eight years. This is a kaplan meyer survival analysis plot for um, the need for retreatment. And this is re patients who had retreatment in the five or eight years, up to eight years after their initial treatment. And this was retreatments for the same vein because of recanalization. Now, towards the end, it was possible that it was simply for symptomatic recanalization. But these were all patients, they didn't have to be referred back by their GP. We were seeing them regularly anyway. And if they had you know, a few more varicosities and they had recanalization, they were quite likely to get retreatment, particularly early on. So they weren't all necessarily terribly symptomatic. But as you can see, the baseline figure, when there's still a fair number at risk at five years or 60 months, there was 15% retreatment rate. So from a duplex outcomes point of view, so just purely on a technical point of view, um, we subdivided into three different outcomes, either fully occluded, where all of the treated length of vein was occluded with no recanalization, to the other end of the spectrum where over 50% of the treated length was recanalized and partially occluded somewhere in the middle. So there were some areas of recanalization, but not so less than half of the length. So these are the results from that. So you can see that the subdivided into the great saphenous and the small saphenous vein. And the great saphenous results are slightly better. 57% um, of the great saphenous were fully occluded at, um, at five years. In addition to that, there were another 12% who were uh, so secondarily occluded, so the ones who'd come back for retreatment, but I've excluded them from there. Very few had fully recanalized veins, so less than 5%. From an ulcer point of view, this is the same population, but obviously a smaller number of them. So 51 legs were treated for either healed or current ulcers. Six of those patients had both deep and superficial venous reflux. And the median duration of the ulcers at time of treatment was 12 months. Earlier on, which we'd um, previously presented, 23 of 24 ulcers had healed within three months. The other patient had unfortunately died of carcinomatosis. Um, also, recurrence we found at long term was four out of our 50 healed legs developed recurrence. Two of these were fairly early on, and both of these patients had deep venous reflux. And two had late recurrence after five years, and both of these patients had recanalization and superficial venous reflux. At four years, we had a 96% free from recurrence rate on survival analysis, which is shown here. And just to give you an idea, that compares with a four-year recurrence rate of 31% in the SCAR study at their long-term follow-up. From the deep clinical grade point of view, obviously pre-treatment, which is shown in red, everyone had C2 or worse disease, and that improved um, after treatment. Venus clinical severity score, which is, a, which is an improvement if the score is lower, significantly improved after treatment. Venus refilling time, which is considered normal if it's over 20 seconds, um, significantly improved also after treatment. So most things got better basically, but we did have some recanalization, which is not on, just on a from a duplex point of view. 
So patients obviously don't know whether they've got recanalisation. So the important question to us was to know what the relationship is between the recanalisation and the other clinical hemodynamic and patient reported outcomes to see how they compare. So this is a little complicated. Um, so on the, the left of each of the next slides is all the patients who are, have full occlusion and on the right hand side of the slides are any patients who've got any degree of recanalisation. And you can see that more of the patients who were fully occluded had improvement from baseline in their steep clinical grade, which is common sense really. Um, so this shows, so on the left side, 75% of patients had C2, so visible varicose veins, or worse at five years, which is again what we'd expect. However, it's not just, so yes, the seat clinical grade is worse in patients who have recanalisation, but they had worse disease to begin with, so with only 55% of the patients who ended up getting recanalisation had C2 disease, the rest had more severe disease. Pretty similar picture with the VCSS in that the patients who were fully occluded had significantly better scores at five years. However, the, the improvement um, seen in both of those groups was significant. And actually, the patients who developed recanalization had a significantly worse VCSS at baseline as well. Pretty similar picture again in the venous refilling time. So the venous refilling time was significantly better in the patients who had full occlusion but there was a significant improvement in both of the groups, whether they were occluded or not. And again, they had the patients who developed recanalisation had worse venous refilling time at outset. And again, for the Aberdeen varicose vein symptom severity scores, you remember the disease-specific quality of life. So the disease-specific quality of life is better in the patients who have full occlusion, but both groups had shown significant improvement from baseline and the group who developed recanalisation had significantly worse disease at baseline. Um, patient satisfaction was slightly lower in the patients who had some recanalisation, but it still approached 8 out of 10. So in conclusion, most patients' expectations were met or exceeded. We had high patient satisfaction and sustained improvement in health-related quality of life at 5 to 8 years. 15% of our patients required retreatment at five years, and long-term ulcer recurrence was lower than we previously, sorry, than had been previously reported. We do have high recanalisation rates. Um, there are 42% of the GSV and 49% of the short saphenous vein were recanalised to some degree at long-term follow-up. However, the majority affected less than 50% of the length of the vein, and it appears to be less severe, less hemodynamically significant and less symptomatic than the original venous disease. Despite the recanalisation, patient satisfaction remained high, and it appears that worse venous disease at outset may predict recanalisation. Thank you.